What up, what up, what up, everybody? It's your boy DFS Up North here with another DFS Army PGA Dead by Noon podcast. Today, we are going to talk about the Tour Championship. It is the culmination of the FedEx Cup playoffs. There's a lot going on this week. I'm going to break it all down for you. We'll talk about the course. We'll talk about the starting strokes. We'll talk about like the, the, the issues that DraftKings has with pricing the showdown and where there's tons of value there. They misprice it. There's a huge opportunity uh, here, but let's get to it. Dead by Noon, PGA, DFS Army. DFS up north. Let's go. What up, what up, what up, everybody? Like I said, it's your boy DFS up north, aka Josh Thomas here with another DFS Army Dead by Noon PGA podcast. And we are talking about the tour championship at East Lake Golf Club uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia, where the play is play. Uh, and it is the last event of the FedEx Cup playoffs. This is the culmination of the entire year. We actually get like a, what, almost a two to three week break here after the first week of NFL before we come back with the fall swing and the Fortnite. And then I think it's straight into the Ryder Cup. If my memory serves me, maybe there's one more event in there, but then we get Ryder Cup and the full fall swing and back kind of into the swing a bit. But this is the last PGA video pod uh, for the, the calendar year. We'll kick these things back up again uh, in the spring. But uh, our attention is shifting to football. I am watching our fantasy, our regular full season-long fantasy draft right now. And my boy Bob is just – he's going to get auto-picked here. We're like almost in the last round, so it's probably not the end of the world if, if, if Bob gets auto-picked. But uh, – yeah, we I'm, I'm feeling good. I got, you know, Jalen Hurts. I got some Kirk Cousins action going on, Kirk O'Chains. Uh, but we are going to get into that uh, coming up. So you got to be on the lookout. You know, you can use that code NFL2023 for 25% off a of VIP monthly membership, which is the best deal that we've ever had in my five years here, which is crazy to think that I've been here five years now. But uh, it is literally the best deal that we've ever had. So get in on that before the first week of NFL. Uh, we will have you covered showdowns as, as kind of my specialty. I'll have cheat sheets out for pretty much me and Bobby Clinks or Bobby while we'll be doing um every other uh showdown i think i'll do mondays and sundays and and he'll do thursdays and and we'll go from there but uh i'm excited for for this week it's or for for the nfl it's going to be a ton of fun uh and we've got some sneaky good things in where i'm not telling you guys about it yet but it's coming so you got to be a vip um and we are going to crush week one so uh with that being said let's get into this week all right we are at the East Lake Golf Club Tour Championship. The top 30 in the FedEx Cup standings are here. Um, and as always, it's a little bit weird. So I don't understand necessarily why they do it. Even Xander Schauffele came out today and said, hey, I don't really know how the scoring works. But basically, based on the FedEx Cup standings coming into this week, everybody starts at a different score. So like Scotty Scheffler is number one in the FedEx Cup standings. He's going to start with a two-stroke lead um, at minus 10. Uh, Hovland's going to be at minus 8. McElroy is third. He'll be at 7, 6, 5. And then it goes all the way down to the guys starting at even. 10 strokes back. We got Burns, Grillo, Hatton, Spieth, and Straka. Uh, spoiler alert, I like some of these guys down here at even. Um, there's not a ton of scoring variance here. We're not seeing guys go super low at East Lake, So it is going to be tough for some of these lower uh, guys to kind of get up in the action. But... Uh, any birdies that they do make is really going to go a long way because like I said, there's not a ton of scoring variance here. So if you can get a guy that goes from like even to five, like he shoots five under for the week, which is a, a, a pretty good score here. Um, he is going to likely be in the nuts just because of the way that the pricing works. So, uh, really this week, what you got to do is you got to kind of make a, a little bit of a stand and we'll go over that here in a second. Um, it's a little different on each site, but you gotta make a little bit of a stand at the top. Say, Hey, where are you going? Um, for me this week, uh, it's crazy to do it. Because if you give Scotty Scheffler a two-stroke lead in every single event that he's played in this year, he wins half of them, um, which is just a wild number. But I, I'm just I'm so concerned about the putter that I am going to push some chips in on guys like McElroy. I really like guys like Shoffley, who's been great here, Cantley, and the winner last year did not. The winning lineup in the big uh, DFS contest did not have the winning player in it last year. So the guy who won the FedEx Cup uh, last year, which was Roy McIlroy, uh, did not get in the winning lineup. So you don't necessarily need to have the winner this week. It's, it's really more or less about getting guys who are going to make a ton of birdies. So uh, you want to get uh, that in your um, 
in your player pool, right? So let's talk about the course though. East Lake, Bobby Jones grew up playing here. Um, Donald Ross design located just east of Atlanta, Georgia, can hence the term East Lake. Uh, founded in 1904, Bobby Jones and his family moved there quite quickly after that. Um, when it was still Tom Bendelow design, I know this because I'm a Bobby Jones historian. I do love Bobby Jones. Um, but uh, then Donald Ross came in and uh, really revamped it uh, a couple of years later. Uh, and it's a very classic Donald Ross design, par 70, 7,346 yards, very strategic bunkering. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, any Donald Ross design there is going to be elite bunkering. So, uh, some super undulating greens, a lot of turtlebacks out here. Uh, you're going to need a real deft touch, and he's going to give you lots and lots of risk reward. Um, it's, you know, more of a strategy over length type of course. And of course, that's going to really demand that you be good with your short game. And if you look at the winners here over uh, the past couple of years, that's what you will see. Uh, I put a whole thing in here about Bobby Jones, because like I said, I love Bobby Jones. I've read pretty much every book by Bobby jo or about Bobby Jones out there. So uh, smallish greens, lots of bunkers. Like I said, there is water and it comes into play kind of. Um, and we're all sorts of Bermuda here, except for in the fairways. You are going to get Zoysia grass, which uh, the players love. You get all sorts of great lives. So if you hit it in the fairways here, you are going to be able to uh, pounce on uh, these greens and get it tight. Um, man, 2018 was when Tiger won here. That seems like a lifetime ago. Um but guys with uh, elite uh, history here at East Lake are, you know, guys like Xander Schauffele, uh, Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Max Homa, Scotty Scheffler, Glover's coming in hot. Oh, look at Rory McIlroy, uh, Victor Hovland, Max Homa, Lucas Glover, right? So, and look at this big gap here. Uh, basically, Xander and Rory have played really good here, and nobody else has. I think Rahm is interesting this week. Uh, he's starting at six. I think he's like the classic GPP play uh, in your head. He's going to be under owned. Um, I really think that's going to be the case. So you're going to get a world class player at a high price. And if you play him, it's, it's likely that you can't play some of these other guys um, at the top on Fandle. You, you probably can, but on DraftKings for sure, it's going to be hard to, but you get a, a, a regular John Rom round and you're going to be smashing. So as usual, this article is always uh, free for you guys to check out. I will put the link down below in the bio um, so that you can get access to it. If you want to get access to our VIP tools, like the research station that I'm going to bring up here in a second, then you need to become a DFS Army VIP, which you can use the code NFL 2023 uh, to get access to. How do I get to the research station? This new website. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, look at the Sharp app getting the things in there. If you're not a member of the Sharp app, get over there too. You got legal gambling in your state. Get in involved um let me open this in google sheets so like this research station like i said is going to be accessible to anybody that has a vip account um and it's sortable if you make a copy of it you can do all sorts of crazy things this week which i want to make a copy so that we can get sortable on here uh and i can show you guys where the value is this week i do give you this because i'm a kind fellow um Again, it's a, it's a bit of a break here after PGA. So don't hang up the, don't log out of your DraftKings account. Get involved. Uh, you want to be playing in the NB or NFL and then roll it right into NBA and NHL and college football. And it's going to be a great year. So some of the value this week, right, um, are going to be these guys that are super cheap because they're still going to put up a decent points. Remember, our value is projected FP per $1,000 of salary. Uh, so that's why this week I am very, very willing to take chances on guys like Sepp Straka, who I love. He's starting at even, but he's a great value. He was seventh here last year. Uh, Sam Burns, who's been playing well. History here is a bit eh, but again, great play. Jordan Spieth, Tyrell Hatton. Colin Morikawa, uh, all these guys are really, really, really strong FP values here. Uh, we also said that this is a, a tougher course, um, or a, let's let's look at strong field first, actually. Let's see who plays really, really well in these strong fields. Well, look at, there you go, John Rahm. Currently, you look over here, you can see that his stats are not that good, um, but he's the best strong field player there is, Rory, and then Colin Morikawa, right? Um over the last 15, though, you can see that Rom's only beat 68% of the field. Uh, Morikawa's only beat 74. And then you got this string of guys in here in the 90s, which is kind of a wild number. Uh, but you could go down a thousand different rattle, rabbit holes here. Like, 
okay, we said short games and Purton. Who's good on Bermuda? Wow, look at there. My boy, Xander Shoffley, who's a core play for me this week. Like I said, you can go down a thousand different rat rabbit holes this week uh, in our research station, but I want to get into uh, some lineup construction here, right? Um, so we said that it's going to be tough to, to play a couple of these top guys, right? So let's just say for, for purpose of trying to win like a huge GPP, I'm just going to throw one dart in there. All right. Well, how do you build the lineup that, that kind of accommodates that? So for me, I, like I said, I think it starts with John Rom. He's going to be the lowest owned of those guys up top. Then you throw in a guy like Xander Shoffley. All right. Well, we only got 8,975 here. Uh, weirdly, FanDuel, sharper pricing this week than uh, anywhere else. Um, but it's pretty easy for me to go down here and say, oh, Sepp Straka, I'll click that. Thank you. Now I'm back up to 95. Oh, Sam Burns, I love you this week. Here we go. Now we're at 10,000. Uh, and you can get into here and say, all right, where's the value? What's Morikawa at? Uh, 10.8. Okay, that's 95. Um, and now I probably want to get a little bit sneakier down here. So maybe a guy like Finau who has great history here, but hasn't been playing that well, a Harmon. Okay. If I go Harmon here, can I uh, upgrade somewhere else? Right. Uh, cause that's always what you want to try to look at. Do I like Keegan Bradley more than Sepp? And the answer is probably not. Do I like, if I could get up to Connors over Burns, I'd consider it, but I can't, I don't think it gets me to Finau. All right, um, maybe that's the play here just on in a big contest. I love Burns this week, but Finau is going to go under own. Um, so like this sort of lineup is is something that I'm I'm intrigued by. Let's say we go Connors. I really like Corey Connors this week. Um, and cheapies. Let's go cheapies. You could go somebody like uh, even a Keegan Bradley. Let's you play Siwoo Kim. I don't love it, but right. Like there's 30 players in the field. The variance is so high that everyone is, is viable this week. Even a guy like Nick Taylor, who I really have no interest in this week or Taylor Moore, who shot a million last week, right? All these guys are viable this week. The only guy that the only guy in the field that I'm really probably not playing is Jason day. Um, and maybe that comes back and, and bites me in the butt, but um, that's kind of where I'm going. But now we need to talk about showdown. All right. There are some inefficiencies in the market in showdown. So let me show you here. Uh, these are the showdown salaries. Okay. You can see Scotty, no surprise, Rory, Victor. It's, it's basically a mirror of what they have on the, the full slate, except they bumped everybody up to 6,000 because they didn't go, you know, they, they kind of compressed everybody. But um, when we look over here, everybody's priced based on their starting strokes. Okay. That's why you're getting guys like Jordan Speed, Colin Morikawa, like guys like that who are live to be the first round leaders without the strokes included. Um, really cheap. We look at this round one scoring without starting strokes, and we can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth favorite is Colin Morikawa. Okay. The eighth favorite to be the low round one score. Colin Morikawa. All right. Now we look back here and how many guys I got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. So essentially Morikawa, according to what DraftKings usually does, should be the eighth guy here. Right. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 guys. So we are getting massive, massive value on guys like Colin Morikawa. We're also, we're getting maybe even better or not better value, but we're getting great value even on like a Tommy Fleetwood at 7,900. Um, who else? Terrell Hatton is 20 to one to be the, uh, the best scorer here. He's sixth, right? 18th in the, the, the pricing. So you can build some just nasty lineups here. Hatton, Morikawa, right? You're feeling good about those guys. Um, Let's even say like we've seen Sepp Straka go bonkers, right? Where's he at on here? He's probably at the bottom. Yeah, Straka's 40 to 1, but he's still a better value than some of these guys, right? Um, so you can get Straka. Let's say you go Straka. Um, and then we can, you know, you're looking at over 9,000 for the next guy. So guys like Xander Shoffley, who I think is even at 9,100, a strong value here. Patrick Cantlay crushes here. Now I can get a Rory. Like that lineup is nasty, right? If I can go down away from Straka, I can get up to Burns. Like, how good is that lineup? 
right? Because of these inefficiencies on DraftKings. So you're going to want to take advantage of that in round one. Uh, I, I notified that in my cheat sheet uh, that you guys can get access to. But if this like continues into round two and things like that, you know that I will have that in our VIP only cheat sheet uh, that you guys all have access to. So that's all I got for you guys. I am going to get back into my fantasy football draft. Again, use that code NFL2023 for 25% off. Let me know who you guys think is going to win the Tour Championship this week. If you think that Scotty's going to hold on with that 50-50, uh, essentially 50-50 chance looking at the, the past year. You think Rory's going to seal it. You think John Rahm, who I said is my favorite GPP upside play, is going to come from behind and win. Let me know. Get into it. This has been a great year at Dead by Noon. I'm excited for football. Have a great week, everybody. Cheers.